that, uh, that you would teach us, Lord. Um, and I think that's just the, the cry of our hearts, Lord. That's our prayer, Father, amen. that you would just teach us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So 2 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, this is really a continuation. Last week we're going to uh, cover all these verses and just finish it, but uh, I figured there was just too much there. So we're just going to go over it, finish up what we, we left off. Uh, we went through verses 8 and 9 last week, and we'll just pick up in verse 10. And we just see that salvation is centered on Jesus Christ. Look at verse 10 of 2 Timothy. It says, but has now been revealed. Okay, well actually for the context, let's go all the way up to verse 8. You guys remember uh, Paul is encouraging young Timothy not to be ashamed. Not that he was ashamed, but do not become ashamed of the gospel. It says, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner Paul, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. In other words, you know, praise the Lord through the sufferings. Don't run from it. Don't ask the Lord to take it away, but rather allow the Lord to give you the strength to get through it. And verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That's a reason why you should, you know, share in this, this gospel of suffering with Paul. Right? That the Lord's called you not to be ashamed of this gospel because he saved you, because he's called you, and, and thirdly, because it's a holy calling altogether, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Just like Colossians 1, uh, Genesis, you know, the first couple chapters, we see the work of creation. God created us with a purpose, with an intent. He knew your name before he created this world. He knew what he was going to do in our time today, you know, 6,000, 7,000, even, you know, 10 billion years before creation was even around in our existence, right? <clears throat> of everything that we know of. He knew what he was going to do in the future because he's outside of our time zone, our time limit. And that's why he's God, duh. But look at verse 10. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So, amen to that. <laughs> I can't stop reading and be like, wow, Lord, oh, amen. Um, it's been said that all the Bible has been condensed really in verses 9 and 10. So I'm going to read it again, and consider if you can combine the entire Bible, right, all the books in the Bible, all 66, and just push them all down to one to two verses, uh, this has been said that this might be the, the verses right here. Who has saved us, God saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So it's an enormous portion of scripture as it speaks to the deity of God. The sovereignty of God, the responsibility of man, the centrality of, of Christ Jesus. Um, the fact that Jesus Christ has abolished death. When did he do that? Question for you guys. At the cross of Calvary, right? When he died on the cross for our sins. And he brought life. When did he brought, bring life? Well, at the resurrection, right? 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, Romans chapter 4 Verse 25 even says, Who has delivered us, or I'm sorry, who has was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. So, yes, he was delivered for our offenses, but he was raised for our justification, right? And I say hallelujah to that, right? Just as if we never sinned. He took our place. He took our, right? There's no record. There's no trace of our existence with sin. It's, it's just, it's mind-blowing, right? I'm just like, <laughs> There are some things I just don't understand about God, and, and this level of love, I just, I don't, under, I don't want to understand it necessarily. I'm like, Lord, uh, just, 
count me in. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, but it's based on and, and centered on Jesus Christ and Him alone, right? If you're looking for salvation apart from Jesus Christ, you're, you're not going to get You'll never find it, right? right. It's not going to happen. Jesus said in John 14, 6, this is one of the most offensive scriptures that everybody gets all like, ooh, right? But Jesus said, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. So Jesus Christ, he mm -hmm. is central. He's, he's, he's the center of, of everything right here, right? And because he was raised from the dead, uh, 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 1 Corinthians 15, actually, the whole chapter you can read uh, in its entirety, you and I will be resurrected from the dead because, well, he also was, he abolished death, right? So if we're in Christ as believers, we're with Christ as believers. So 1 Corinthians 15, 55 even says, this is just one verse out of it, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? And, and the answer to that question is, well, it's basically nowhere to be found. <laughs> it's been Amen. abolished, right? So because life came in Jesus Christ, Jesus said at the end of John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So, man, praise the Lord for that, right? Yeah. That it's all about Jesus, and He is our position, He is our record, He is our holiness, right? He's our everything. There's, there, we're not going to get to heaven and be like, this is my passport of all the things I've done. It's, this is everything that Jesus has done, <laughs> right? Oh, what makes you think you can come here? Uh, look at Jesus, right? Don't look at me. That's, that's all of us. That's why we're going to be in His kingdom. That's why we know Him now, right? Because of what He did for us. Well, the third reason, and remember we've been going over uh, from last week, um, basically of not being ashamed, verses 8 and on, uh, we looked at the rule that we have, right? And that was not to start to become ashamed, because Timothy wasn't ashamed of the gospel. He was obviously the pastor there in Ephesus. He was proclaiming the truth, proclaiming the gospel, and, and Paul is just giving him an encouragement here to do not become ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right? And here's, there's a couple of ways that we can do that, and we went over that last time. And we also looked at the reason we're given for not being ashamed. And what was that? And that, that was because salvation is from God and Him alone, right? It's all about Jesus Christ and Him alone. But third, the third reason is the results we see. And it's for not being ashamed. What's the result that we see for not being ashamed? It's going to be verses 11 and 12. Look at verse 11. It says, To which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, Paul says. And so the first thing that I see that is involved in the reason or the, the result that we see as far as not being ashamed, if you're not being ashamed of Christ Jesus, the first thing I see right here in verse 11 is really being appointed, right? It, it, the idea is, you, you see the results of not being ashamed, um, is being selected by God, being appointed by God. For what? For a threefold ministry, this is what Paul had, to be a preacher, to be an apostle, a, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Uh, that word preacher is one who proclaims or, or heralds uh, the truth, right? which is the gospel. An apostle uh, is one who goes out. He's a messenger sent by God himself to proclaim the truth, right? To, to preach the truth more so. And a teacher is simply just one who instructs others in the truth. So, church, if, if we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we're not ashamed of the sufferings that may come as a result of sharing our faith, man, you'll be appointed, you'll be selected to do what? What is it? You'll be appointed and selected to really proclaim the truth to others, to be a messenger of God and one who teaches the gospel of salvation. Isn't that great? Now, you're not going to be an apostle, obviously, like the Apostle Paul, um, because obviously they walked with Christ, they saw the Lord in his day, um, we didn't physically, but in a sense, 
uh, we proclaim just as much as they do, right? We're, we're commissioned, in the Great Commission, to proclaim the gospel, according to Acts. So, we all need to realize we've been appointed to this ministry of what? Of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to this world, right? And, and no matter what job, what position that we have, you know, you're appointed to preach the gospel. That's what the word preach mainly means, right? It's the unsaved. You're, 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 you're proclaiming the truth that they might be saved. There's a mission. There's, there's a goal behind what you're even conversing about, right? You don't, hey, how's the weather? How's this? Oh, that's a great way. Oh, I love the scenery. Oh, yeah, would you, yeah, did you watch the news? Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's vanity, right? As a believer, when we speak to the non-believers, it, we, we, I don't know how it happens, but Christ comes out of everything, right? You could be talking about anything. Yeah, that weather's great. It's amazing how God did, you know, and he, he, did you know that what Jesus, you know, is we, we give the gospel, we take advantage of every opportunity, and that's preaching the gospel to the unsaved, right, and give, proclaiming it to them. But we're to go, we're to preach the truth, right? Go to them and give them the truth of the gospel, and don't just, this is the way I was taught, is, okay, here, here you go, Josh, so you're going to go give the gospel now, okay? So let's pray, Lord, be with us, amen. All right, now, here's four easy steps that you need to go show them. So go, there you go, and I'll go, uh, hey, excuse me, can I tell you about, uh, so here's number, number one, um, so you're a sinner, uh, you need to believe in Jesus, you need to repent, and you need to pray. You want to pray? <laughs> They're like, uh... Sure. <laughs> you're, oh, welcome, man. Now you're you're in the kingdom of God, because that's the way I was trained, right, when I was a kid. And I was like, congratulations. All of heaven is singing right now for you, because, man, you just made a decision. And, 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 and here I am deceiving myself into saying something that I don't know what happened in the heart, but I saw what happened physically, and I made a poor judgment and not using discernment. And then I said, okay, on your way. Goodbye. I'll see you later. Christian, brother, all right, and then I walk away like, wow, man, that was like 15 of them people today that prayed with me, it was great, I'm, you know, I got my belt on, you know, <laughs> my, or my badge belt, you know, and, but, where's the teaching? I, I left them to, to go their way, and, 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 and I realized, uh, praise the Lord, at a young age too, is, Take them aside and walk them through the scriptures. Let them hear the scriptures pro as far as what Christ did for them. And what does Jesus require, uh, like Nicodemus, right? Read John 3 to them. Read the whole chapter to them. And, and allow them to see that God loved you so much that he sent his only son, right? That you don't have to die. You don't have to perish, right? You could read a couple of Romans verses there that sin... Uh, the punishment of sin is death, right? You're going to die. And, and, and just give them the good news. But Christ came that you can have life, that you can have a relationship with Him. And, and it's a good thing. And so now when they pray and they seek the Lord on their own, and that's the goal, right? Not for you to get some kind of religious agenda and some kind of you know, schedule, but it's them to have a walk with the Lord. And now they're getting the Word, they're reading it, they have a desire the light's been on, they don't even realize it, and they're seeking the Lord, but God's already been found because they repented of their sins and they turned to the Lord, and now they're, they're seeking the Word. And, and it just, you know? But it was your job to go to them and proclaim this truth to them. How do they know unless the preacher's sent, right? So we got to go, though. Who's the preacher? You're the preacher. You're the believer. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't wear that little thing, and... I don't have a hat, and I haven't gone through this religious system and got a certificate, so not me, right? No, yes, the moment you gave your life to the Lord, the moment salvation was found, you became a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, did I say you have to get up on a big old, you know, thing and, Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? <laughs> As they're going into, you know, the Super Bowl or whatever it is, you're a sinner, you need it, you sinner! Oh. I didn't say that, right? What I'm saying is, have a personal, we have a personal relationship with Christ and we're encouraging a personal relationship, so make it personal to other people that you talk to, right? And, and yes, John the Baptist did, but they came to him for a purpose, to hear the gospel, right? And get baptized. They came because they wanted to hear 
There's other people that don't want to hear it. We got to go wherever God sends us, wherever who's around us. But there's a, a, a different heart about it, right? A different atmosphere when we share the gospel. We're not trying to force it down their throat, literally. Like, get on the ground! Now, I'm going to count to three. If you don't give your life to the Lord, <laughs> we don't do it like that. Um, and that's how it seems with others. But secondly, uh, let's look at verse 12. This is, it involves being secure. Uh, being secure. Look at verse 12. It says, For this reason I also suffer these things, Paul says. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Notice the words, I know, and the word, able, right? That he is able. He says, I know, so there's confidence there in Christ Jesus. We're, we already talked about Paul's sufferings, right, in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, last time we were together, and, and the things that he went through. But Paul was absolutely persuaded, he was sure that he was committed to Christ, what he deposited, um, that Christ was going to keep, basically, right? So, it was going to be Secure until the day, okay? Now, what does that mean? What, what did Paul commit to Christ right here? Some are divided on this, okay? So I'm going to give you guys a couple of uh, views, if you will, some popular uh, opinions in that sense. Some say he's talking about the gospel message itself right here, right? That Paul is absolutely persuaded that God is able to keep the gospel message which Paul had entrusted or had committed uh, to God until the day, basically until the day that, that God calls him, right, to, to be with him in his presence. So some say he's talking about the gospel. And I can see that. And, and others say, no, it's, it's speaking of Timothy, right? After all, this letter is written to Timothy. So young Timothy was going through some problems, which we know if you read 1st 2nd Timothy, um, and Paul was absolutely persuaded that God was going to keep or secure young Timothy until the day he was done with Timothy. And I could also see that view, right? It's okay, I, I see that. And God was, you know, speaking about, um, so he's speaking about Timothy here. Others say, no, Paul is speaking about himself. Paul's speaking of himself. Paul was talking about his own life, his own ministry. After all, Paul was ready to die. And you guys uh, will get to it in 2 Timothy uh, 4, 6, where he says that he's, he's, he's being poured out as a drink offering, right? His time of departure is already here. He's, he's ready to go at this moment. And, and Paul was absolutely persuaded that God was able to keep, to secure that which he committed to Christ, which was his own life, in, in the preaching of the gospel until the day, until the day that God's ready to take him out of this world, right? right? Out of the ministry in that sense. Uh, so, well, which one is it? I'm not sure. <laughs> all right. The, I think, you know, all three are very uh, possible, <clears throat> very apl uh, applicable, right, for all of us as believers, right, as far as the gospel, the young Timothy, and, and Paul himself, right? But what all this means to you and me is that Paul was persuaded that God was able to keep or secure that which Paul committed or deposited to God until the day that God was done with Paul, right? And that's, that's, that's the same thing for us today. We can apply this to our own hearts, right? He'll do the same for you and I today. That which we commit to Christ, He's able to secure it until the day He is done with us as well. So you see, the ministry that we all have as believers as preachers and teachers of the gospel, we're going to be persuaded that God is going to secure us in uh, that appointment, basically, right? Until he's finished with us. But obviously you're breathing, your heart's pounding right now, so he's not done with you yet. He has a plan and a purpose, maybe for the next five minutes. I don't know, right? But he has a purpose for your life. Whether you're going to be gone tomorrow, this week, next week, I don't know when it is. But it's going to happen. You see, we're not going to be finished with the ministry, basically, that God has given us until we're, we're finished with the ministry that God's given us. I don't know how to explain that. It's pretty, 
right? He's, it's, it's when he's ready to take us out. So now I'm not, I'm not the smartest of all of us, right? But that seems pretty simple to me. That, I'm just going to throw that out there. We're, we're not going to leave this earth until we're supposed to leave this earth, right? We're, we're not going to be done with the work ahead of schedule or even behind schedule. It's going to be a perfect, perfect masterpiece, right? You guys are... Some of you guys are artists, right? And you guys know when you look back at all that detail and all that work that you were just focused and honed in on on that specific little area on that paper, and then you look back and you're like, whoa, you know, it's finished. The talus died, right, in the Greek. It's, it's done. And I see Christ doing that. I see the Lord. In the end, it's done. My beautiful bride that was created, you know, that he, he puzzled it all together. Before the earth began. I don't understand it, but I'm all about it, right? <laughs> Lord, amen to that. Um, but God is going to be, he's going to be on, right on time, basically, right? If the Lord decides to take us this week, um, it's not too soon. He'll, he'll keep us, right? He's going to keep us, and he will secure us. He's going to hold you together uh, until... He wants to bring you back to himself. So we're told in John 10, 28, that Jesus says, And I give them eternal life, and that, that they may or shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You're secure, because you're in his hand. You're in his presence. You're with the God Almighty, just like we just talked about before the study, that, you know, we serve an awesome God. We can laugh at the enemy, because they're looking at their greatest weaponry as their actual weapons, right? But our weapons are not carnal, right? Our weapons are mighty in Christ, right? They're tearing down strongholds. They're spiritual. They're, they're, they're just... They're, we have a greater perspective because we serve a greater God in that sense, right? He's the only God, but they serve an idol. They serve a rock. They serve dirt, you know? And they, you know, it's hilarious to us, but they look at us and they're like... It's hilarious to them because they think we do, they don't know because maybe no one's told them. Go and tell even your enemies about Christ and watch and see what the Lord might do. Praise the Lord. God granted me that, right? One of my best friends in, in uh, elementary school, and, uh, his name was Mark, right? He, uh, we're best friends. We're buddies. We're, we're ditching school together, breaking into houses together, you know, stealing. We stole car, uh, three cars and we... We took him down a ditch, and we were, you know, just having fun as kids, and we're little kids, you know, like, I look back, and I'm like, that wasn't, no, that wasn't me, <laughs> but it's crazy to think, right, all the stuff that we did, so we had a lot of experience that we didn't even, we didn't even care about school, it was just, you know, we did our own thing during school time, um, so we were really close, right, but then I remember the first day, the first day of school in sixth grade, right, middle school, um, Already, my my cousin Mark, right, runs into my friend Mark, and they, like, bump each other's shoulders, and they're about to fight. Everybody's, like, circling them, and then so I get in between, and I'm like, what are you doing? I look at him like, that's my cousin. What do you think you're, you know, you don't mess with family. And then, boom, he became an enemy, right? So for the next, I don't know, couple of years, literally, we were fighting in the hallways. We'd see each other every, I think it was fourth period, Every day, in fourth period, walking in the hallway, I would see him. I was, you know, I was Mr. Gangster Guy. Um, but I'm walking, and I'm not about to move, you know. This is my hallway, and I own it, and my buddies are behind me. And then all of a sudden, he's got his buddies behind him. And every day, boom, we just fight. And the principal's like, what am I going to do with you guys? So I ended up getting kicked out of school and going to another school and coming back and I fought with him again and then got to another school and nobody wanted me, right? It's just really bad. And then, uh, but praise the Lord, I saw him at a, uh, um, the sun train, right? Where the, the buses are. And I'll, I'll, I'm walking up to him, because I'm a Christian. I love the Lord, right? And, and he's just like, he's getting his fist like this. I don't know what kind of fighting stance that is, but, you know, he's kind of curling them all in. And he's getting his chest out, and he's all by himself. And I'm just like, hey, hey, Mark! Hey, bud! Hey! And then he's like, <laughs> he's ready, right? And I was like, hey, whoa, 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 calm down, it's all right. Hey, I'm a Christian now. I'm walking to him. 
And I was like, I love the Lord, man. God is so good. He's changed my life. He's done amazing things in my life. I was like, man, I've, I've been wanting to see you and just tell you how good God is. And, and I did. I gave him the whole gospel. He just he sat there and he listened. And he was in tears, believe it or not. And I was, I was watching. I'm, I'm all emotional. And I'm in tears. And we ended up hugging each other. And, and then we became friends again after that, right? I see him every now and then. I'm like, how you doing? What's going on? You know? But it's so good that even our enemies, the gospel, is able to reach through us. So it's not about our preference and who we want. It's about his preference and who he wants. And who does he want? For God so loved just the elect, so just the Christians only. Sorry, everybody else. Unless you're a part of our church, you're not allowed in heaven. What, what does the Bible say? For God so loved the, the world. That means... Everybody in the world, right? And the world system, who's caught up in the world system, who's the god of this world, is Satan, right? But, uh, anyways, so, <laughs> as we commit, as we deposit our lives into the hand of Christ, he's going to use us, he's going to work in and through us, he's going to sustain us, he's going to secure us, he's going to hold us together. Why? Because he has his plans. He knows what he's doing. And, and when we're not ashamed of the gospel... God will secure us. And I'm so encouraged uh, looking at, back at uh, those who preach the gospel, the, the, the truth, right? And they teach the gospel. They teach the word of God and, and with consistency. I'm talking about for years and years, they're, just, they're teaching the word of God. And, and when they could choose the pleasures of this world, right? Because I, I, I talk to other Christians and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, did, I was just drinking the other day and I was just, and I'm like, <gasps> you know. It's just, it's foreign to me to hear of, you know, just how other people use their liberties. And that's, you know, you do your thing. That's, you know, I didn't hear you getting drunk. You know, you, you do your thing. Uh, it's just, it's foreign to me, right? I'm just not used to it. But I'm not saying I'm not a sinner. I'm a sinner, okay? But these pastors, I'm encouraged by them because they're, they're studying the Word of God, but they're sacrificing what they could be doing Right? They have families, they have jobs, they would rather, you know, sleep in, and like everybody else, say, hey, how'd you do? Oh, on your day off, oh, I slept in, it was great, oh, I went camping in the morning, and then I went to church, oh, I went fishing, I went and did this, I went, and you're like, oh, you know, these guys, they're sacrificing their life. Their entire life is dedicated to serving the Lord no matter what, right? They have all these, you know, the families, and they, they, they have friends, and they, you know, with all that comes a lot of priorities and time and responsibility and you know you meet up with each other and, and whatnot but to them the word of God is greater than their family their, the word of God is greater than their friends the word of God is greater than you know the latest and greatest trend or the concerts that are happening and then you know I'm just saying the things that happen in this world God's word is so much greater to them it's precious to them but so Jesus Christ is the reason they live. He's the reason they live. He's the reason they choose to live, right? Because they could end their life at any moment, just like we can. But those kind of people, they're going to receive their reward. And, and they will, not in this life, but in the life to come. And that reminds me of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 1. If you guys have your Bibles, turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. It says, Jesus said, and this is a popular chapter. You guys probably all memorize it. Um, but it says, Jesus says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Now he's talking financially here. But otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be, uh, have glory from men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your, your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly. Now, put that in perspective of ministry, right? You're giving unto the Lord, there's some guys, you know, pastors, evangelists, there's some, you know, whatever ministries that they're in, even, even uh, deacons, elders, door, you know, greeters, and whatever they may be, they make a big show about what they do. They got the latest hair trend, you know, the latest, like, 
you know, clothing trend, and they walk in with the saggy pants, and they're all, what's up, dogs? What's up? You know, and they, they talk like the people. They might even burp a couple cuss words out, you know, and just, just to relate and saying, hey, I'm just as world as you. Love me. Yay. Let's build a big church together. You know, a big Tower of Babylon again. That's basically the, the, the mindset. And it's scary. But they do these things to be open so that they get their reward basically right then and there right but when you read the word there's wisdom and wisdom says don't don't get the reward right now get it later on and you're like wow no one's taught me this i want it now all right i just i want to perform so i can receive it right now but when you read the word just like we just did jesus is talking about you'll, you'll get your reward and he's speaking about after this life, right? It's not about, you watch TV, you get all messed up, even the radio, right? I listen to certain teachings, I'm like, why am I listening to you? And they encourage you from what you could have right now. Just give me your money and God's going to do this, right? And they all of a sudden, they become, you know, a prophet for God and they're speaking on God's behalf and where in the world is this thing? <laughs> and, you know, but there's so much here and now. What about do what you can in the eyes of God, and don't tell anybody about it, be a, a secret ninja, right? Doing it, right? Whatever it is. And, and do your ministry before the Lord, and minister unto the Lord, and, and don't care about those around you, as far as their, oh, congratulations, right? Don't worry about it. Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 19. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So my question to you guys is, where is your heart? Where is your achievement going to be in your life? Where's your legacy going to be on your tombstone, right? This person loved money more than God. This person loved the Lord more than the world. What, what, what is it going to say, right? What are we going to say of you in that sense, right? Is it obvious, your hearts? Because it is obvious before people. And people know you by the words you speak to them all the time. Right? So when I think of certain people, I think of what the, oh, that, you know, he's always about money. He just talks about money, about money, 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 money. Oh, that person, oh, that person's very emotional. They're always just so sad, right? Oh, that person, oh, yeah, that's it, you know? They love Jesus, you know? You know them, but, because they just, they can't help but, like, you know, it just comes out. So may I encourage you guys to take a life of denial, Really, look, look later on in the chapter, Jesus says in, in verse 24, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he will reward each according to his works. Now remember, those works, we know later on, that are not just the works you do, but the motive behind the works you do. Right? Why did you do what you did? Right? Because you could do all these things, but if your heart is wrong... It's, there's no reward to it because it was done in vain. It wasn't done unto the Lord. It was done because I have to bless you. Get out of here. Get, take your fiery coals and go warm yourself up. Right? Where's the reward in that? Right? So let's come to the last section we want to cover. And there, there was, there, there's two sections. The first one, we saw that a faithful servant is not ashamed of the gospel, right? In verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Um, and 12, but that involved three things, and we kind of covered the last two. But what we, we see that a faithful servant holds fast to the gospel in verses 13 through 18. We're going to see this. Uh, let's just jump into it. Look at verse 13. It says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me, Paul says, in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. So what was the sound words Timothy heard from Paul. 
It was the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Timothy, don't be ashamed and hold fast, right? Don't let go. Don't turn it loose, basically. Look at verse 14. He says, That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Timothy was to hold fast to the gospel and keep the gospel. Since it was committed to him, he was uh, to keep and guard it as a faithful servant, right? That, that is what we're to do. We're to guard and protect, watch over uh, the gospel that has been entrusted to us as believers in Christ Jesus. We're to hold fast to the gospel, right? And, and, and we're, uh, and going back to that the imagery, right, that I don't know why I was thinking about it, but it just makes total sense to me. Think of like David and Goliath. Oh, no, no, not even David and Goliath. Think of just, remember the wars back in the day? There's like two lines, and, and they all are just staring at each other, right? And, uh, and then one of them starts heading their way, and they're running and charging at them, right? They're about to... They're, they got their weapons or swords or whatever it is, and they're like, ah! And they're coming at them, and they're like, you know, 100 feet, 90 feet, 80 feet, 70 feet. And you're like, uh. And your general, right, the main guy is in charge, is like, hold fast, hold, hold, right? And you're, you're, you're keeping rank in that sense, right? You're holding, you're standing fast. You're holding fast it is the word right there. And... So they would come, right, and, and they would charge against them. Um, some people will, you know, they're, okay, 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, and they're thinking, oh, I got to go to the restroom. I'm out of here, right? They run for their life, and they, they, we call them chickens, right? I don't, you know, they, they just chickened out. They got out of the rank, all right, which really put your other soldiers uh, at risk. Right? You just left the guard. You let, you let the guard down. And, and other people, would, they would stand fast. They would hold their ground. And the people would be coming, hold, hold. And they're, all they're doing is waiting for the next command. Right? And so, same thing with us. If you guys are proclaiming the gospel, proclaim the gospel. If you guys are going through a circumstance or something that God's called you in, stay faithful in it, no matter the circumstances around you. Be faithful until the Lord leads you another direction. Because you're listening to who? The Lord, right? If he's called you to something, be faithful until he says, hold, 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 charge! <laughs> okay, let's go! Right? Be ready and flexible at that moment. Don't get called, uh, caught up in tradition and, you know, culture and whatever, you know, in the, in the, in the holding. But go in charge as well. Um, anyways... We're to keep, we're to secure the gospel. Be willing not only to fight for the gospel of truth, right, but cherish it, right? We're to cherish the word of God. And I believe there's two things that are outlined for us in verses uh, 13 and 14. Number one, it involves faith and love. Look at verse 13 again. It says, hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And there it is. We're to hold fast that pattern of, of uh, the, the, the sound words of faith and love, right, the, the, of the Lord. We're, we're, we're called to defend our faith. I don't think a lot of us realize that. You are called to defend your faith, your, the gospel, right? We're all commanded not to be ashamed of the gospel. We know if we are ashamed of the gospel, he's going to be ashamed of us before our, the, the, the Father, right, in, in the heavens. So Paul is simply saying here, defend your faith, proclaim the gospel, right? But make sure it's temp tempered in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Don't share your faith, the gospel, with, you know, that sense of um, pride and arrogance. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, don't don't be mean spirited. Don't be obnoxious, right? Um, however you say that word. Don't come across then with that holier than thou attitude, like you know. Somehow you have it all together, right? Basically, you know, brother, if you don't listen to me, you're gonna go to hell, right? You're you're you know you're gonna go straight to hell. That that's the wrong uh, heart. It's a wrong attitude. Right, of thinking you need to be like me, and get to the you know my stature, my level with God. Until you get there, there's much for you to learn, my little one. You know, 
There's, there's people that get weird when they, they share the gospel. But it also is seen in love, right? Jesus Christ doesn't force anyone to come to salvation. Keep that in mind. But since he loves us so much, he gives us opportunity, right? Friends, we don't need... Oh, let me just slow down here. We do need to do the same thing, right? We need to do it in faith and love. We should not do the, the ways of the world, right? And in pride and arrogance and how they may deliver the message. Uh, but also it involves, secondly, the Holy Spirit himself. Look at verse 14. It says, That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So it's the work of the Spirit and him alone. If we try to pro proclaim the gospel in our own strength, in, in our own power, we're going to fail miserably. Right? We'll always think that we should have done something more or done something less or we're going to think back and be like, oh man, I think I messed up somehow. Where was it? Oh, what did I do? How did I? Ay, 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 ay. Right? That, that might give you an indicator of that you're doing something. But when we're relying on the Holy Spirit in our lives, since the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, right? Scripture makes that very clear. And every believer, and, and He's dwelling in us for what? what? What is the work of the Holy Spirit doing in us? Not only to seal us, that's what you're right? Ephesians chapter 1, uh, all of Ephesians chapter 4, you could read that. Uh, in fact, Ephesians 4.30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit not only seals you for the day of redemption, uh, but also we see here uh, empowerment right? Through the Holy Spirit. To do what? To hold fast to the gospel, to keep the gospel, not to turn it loose, uh, not to back down, not to shrink or shy, uh, shy of proclaiming the gospel, right? But uh, and remember, why do you do that? Why do you get shy and, 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 and like back down from a dying and lost world? They're dying. They're crying at night before they come to work. They see you and you're like, how are you doing? Oh, great. Yeah. Put on a face, right? For you. But really in their heart, they're, they're, they're asking the Lord, is this all that there is? I mean, really? And nobody's willing to go and share the gospel with them. They're going to die, and they're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because maybe you held back from giving the gospel to them. Paul is t telling Timothy, Timothy, don't back down. Don't be ashamed. Go back to verse 8, right? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Continue, right? Continue proclaiming it. Don't get... Don't let it fade from you. Be reminded, remindful of the power of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and what He can do in your life. Don't get caught up in what you can do and what you can't do, but get caught up in what He can do if you just open up your mouth, right? If you just show people scriptures, if you just get yourself out of your house, wherever you are, and, and set a schedule with somebody and say, hey, can I meet up with you? You know, do something to get out there. Right? Step out a little, uh, uh, in a sense. Um, so uh, what we need is the power and the presence and the uh, really the working, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. So when we're walking in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16, where it says, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, when we are in the power of the Holy Spirit, now all of a sudden we have been empowered from on high, right? According to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Judea, Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Uh, remember, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the early the, 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 the church, right? The day of Pentecost, you see there in Acts. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to go out there, and they were proclaiming the gospel message, right? Uh, also through the gifts, they were, you know, God, they were exhorting the work of God um, and what He was doing. But it's such a tragedy when we rely on our own strength, on our own power, our own flesh, right? The power of our own flesh. So even do something spiritual like sharing the gospel, believe it or not, right? But when we pull from the infinite resources that we have in Christ Jesus, right, of the power of the Holy Spirit, now all of a sudden we can become bold in our faith, right? Mighty warriors who are courageous, right, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now this, this truth, Paul, he amplifies 
right? By way of illustration, verses 15 through 18. Um, so let's go ahead and read that. He illustrates really the fact that we're to keep the gospel by faith, in love, by the Holy Spirit. And he brings up two examples. The first is a bad example in verses 15. And then the second is going to be a, a, a good example in verses 16, 17, and 18. And so Paul brings up a bad example in verse 15. Let's go and look at it. And it, it really involves two people. Um, look at verse 15. It says, This you know, that all those in Asia, all of them, have turned away from me, among whom are uh, Phygelius and Hermo, uh, Hermogene, um, Hermogenes. Right? Um, amazing. Paul is saying everyone in Asia has forsaken him and abandoned him. Obviously, there's churches, you know, that are still thriving, but in this perspective right now, as he's writing this letter, it just feels like everybody's just left him. Everybody just betrayed him in that sense. They're in Asia, and Paul names these two people specifically, right? Phygelius and Hermogenes. We know nothing about these guys except, sad to say, what we know of right here, that they abandoned ship in that sense, right? Um, that when the going gets tough, these guys got going. <laughs> they were out of there. When persecution came, man, they, they, they flaked out, basically. When, when trials appeared, they were nowhere to be found. They're, they're out of there, right? They, they, they're abandoned ship. And, uh, but notice the good. Here's the, here's the good example. The Lord grant mercy to the household of uh, Onesiphorus right here. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me, right? He had the zeal, um, and, and I think, uh, so it's there in Ephesus, right? Uh, there's a lot of background to him. Uh, I'll kind of keep it brief, but notice the word zeal. He, he was zealous, right? He, was, he, was, he had that ambition in that sense. He went looking for Paul, and he didn't just go to one prison, Right or one place, he went to a whole bunch of them until he found Paul. He was asking people. He was just on fire. He he wanted to come in and and be there with Paul. The Lord, verse eighteen, grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. So, um, pretty amazing example of those who are faithful. And and it isn't that. It, it sounded like the truth. In the end, it just sounds like the majority of people have just, they've gone their, their way, right? But there's always that few. There's always just the, the, the remnant in that sense that are just very, very few. Not the majority, like, you know, these two guys, but there's one guy who just stands in the gap and says, Hey, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to go and I want you to suffer for the rest of your life here in this area for the sake of these people's salvation. You're not going to see salvation. You're not going to see fruit in the ministry you do. But I'm calling you to these people to be an example, to be a light, to be a door, right, in that sense. To, to open up the door of the Word of God to them and teach them my Word faithfully, continually, consistency, right, in, in your life. And, and watch and see me do a work. That's what I called you to do. Are you willing to take on the task that God has for you as a believer? Or, or do you just want what's in it for you? I, I just want me to believe to go to heaven. That's it. I'll stay right here in my little world. Goodbye. Until I die. Right? Or are you willing to say, hey, I'll, Lord, I'll, I'll serve you. That, after all, he's not Lord unless you're willing to say that. Right? Um, and, and just say, here, let's do this. You know? Let's go. Be willing to go. Be flexible to go. Uh, in that sense. And I think this guy had it right here. And that refreshed Paul. And what a refreshment that is too for the leaders who are serving the Lord. And, 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 and the enemy strikes them, right? The fiery darts come their way. Boom! Of maybe a little bit of depression, right? A little bit of like, oh, and they get their eyes on themselves and they're not looking to the Lord and they're like, what am I doing? Man, I'm, I'm giving the word. I'm doing this. And oh, it's just so stressful. And you know, I, I could be taking on this full-time job over here instead, and I could be doing that, I could do this, and oh, and the Satan's just, you know, he's shooting them down. But what a refreshment when they look back and they look at the, those who are serving them or coming alongside them in the same ministry as they are, 
in that the Lord's called them to, and what a refreshment it is to be like, man, they're, look at them, they're standing their guard, they're standing for the Lord, they're taking the hits, uh, you know, doesn't that charge you guys up? I know the other night I was, I flipped on, uh, it's probably like a couple weeks now, but uh, I just turned on the TV and there was like boxing match, right? And I was just like, uh, I was fading away, I was already sleepy. But I just saw a little bit part of it, but it got me, my drilling just pumping already. I was like, get him, yeah, get him, oh, get him, yeah. And then I fell asleep and I was like, oh, and I couldn't even sleep. I woke up like all, like I was in it. But that should do the same thing to us when we look at others, right, who are serving the Lord. It's like, yeah, it charges you up. And that's why it's important that you guys continue fellowshipping with other believers, right? Don't fade off to your own little world. But it's important to stay with other believers. Why? Because it's going to charge you up, man. It's going to keep you in the game. And it's just a good thing to all together serve the Lord. right? You can see Paul's heart here. That's why I mentioned that. Is that Paul's like, man, everybody's left me. But hey, guess what? This guy, you know, once the forest right here. He's, man, may the Lord grant to him. You know, he's, he's what a blessing. But uh, may we be a blessing, not only to the Lord, but... If you are a blessing to the Lord, you're going to be a blessing to those around you as well. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you so much um, for who you are. And really the ministry, the life, Lord, that you've given us, the opportunities that you give us, help us, Lord, not to pass them by. Help us to hear from you, Lord, not to be uh, zealous in our flesh, Lord, in the power of the flesh and the, our own strength, Lord. But uh, keep us in your word, Father. Keep us in communication with you. Uh, that we would be ready in season and out of season, Lord, to present the gospel to the world who is lost. Lord, show us um, whatever it is you got to show us. Lord, shake us up, stir us up, Father, uh, to, to keep staying in the game, Lord, not to flake out and run away uh, like these other guys, Lord. Um, so continue being faithful in our lives, Lord. Thank you for who you are and, and letting us know, Lord, that it's your work. It's your your war that's already been won. Lord, it's, uh, it's your victory. And uh, just thank you that we stand on your side. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Amen.